Welcome everyone to the Tuesday edition, January 18th of the NCAA Basketball Daily Dime Show. I'm your host, John Ryan, and of course I'm joined by Jesse Scholl and most of the time, Dr. Chuck. But Dr. Chuck is out today. Everything is good with him. He just was not able to get on the show today. But he will have uh, a pick on this show that I will uh, provide what he wrote to me, and hopefully it'll sound just as good when he does it. But Dr. Hey, Dr. Dr. Jesse. All right, Jesse, welcome to the show. <laughs> and you are a one one hot uh, professional sports better right now. I don't even know what the adjectives are. I mean, you're 13 and 0 on the hardwood, 6 and 0 college basketball, 7 and 0 NBA. I believe you were coming into the week on a 10 and 0 perfect streak. I mean, how's it feel? It feels like it's been a long time coming, I guess, but uh <laughs> You know, this time of year, you, you've got all the data to work with, right? You've seen you, in the NFL, you've seen all the teams play the regular season. You, you know, you've had the time to learn what's going on with each team. We got we're well into conference play now with college hoops. So uh, this is this is not abnormal that I tend to do better given all that data to work with. It's good stuff. I humbly say I went 4-0 with the NFL picks, including my 5%er on the Tampa Bay Bucks. And as we both know, Jesse, there's a lot of pressure when you put out those 5%ers because those are, you know, I put them out as 5% top-rated best bet in a, and stay away from my game of the month. It's just my style. But there's still a lot of pressure uh, to come through for the customers. You know, there's no, no question about it. You can tell them that we hit 65 or higher percentages on those big plays, but that also means that you lose 35% of the time. And uh, you would like that number to be lower, but hopefully we're teaching everybody that this is a grind. And yeah, you have some big days, you have some big weekends, but as soon as that weekend's over, we're on to the next one. And that's exactly what we're gonna do today. Lastly, uh, Dr. Chuck, myself and Jesse are the trio of $2 Tuesday professional sports bettors over at sportsmemo.com. The best news of all is that for five bucks, you can get all three of our $2 plays, which are premium bets. And one of them is my first ever 5%er, again, akin to game of the month in college hoops that I obviously like quite a bit. Again, there's no block here on these shows, but it's a, it's a very strong betting opportunity. So do yourself a favor and get, get all three of us and uh, look forward to a, a good night. Uh, I got it right here. South Carolina Gamecocks are there in the SEC going on the road to play the Arkansas Razorbacks. Bud Walton Arena, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time tonight. Razorbacks are 12-5, and 8-9 against the spread, over under 10-7. and seven. They're 9-1 and one at home, pretty impressive. The Gamecocks are 10-6, and 7-8 and eight against the number, 4-11 and 11 over under on the road, just 1-3. and three. I'm not surprised to say Arkansas here is lined as a 12-point double-digit home favorite with a total of 151.5. Seems like Arkansas will easily score 80 points in this game. What do you think the best bet is in the matchup? Well, John, this line opened at 10, and uh, I got in early with that good line at minus 10. So it's gone up to 12. I still like the play, but I would I would recommend cutting it in half. So, uh, you know, if it was a four-unit play, I would – bring it down to a two unit play given the line movement, but, but I do like Arkansas. I mean, they got off to a rocky start. They lost their first three games in the sec, but they come in with some confidence. They, uh, they beat Missouri by 44 points at home. They followed that up with a come from behind win over LSU, which is, uh, on the road, which is a pretty strong performance there. Now, uh, they've got the momentum. They're the hot team. As you mentioned, they're really strong at home and they're facing a South Carolina team that is, anything but strong on the road. Uh, the Gamecocks are terrible on the road. They're averaging just 57 and a half points per game on the road this season. That's not going to cut it against an Arkansas team that can really score a lot of points. Uh, the Gamecocks last road game was a 20 point loss at Tennessee. I look for something similar here. The Gamecocks are one and five against the spread in their last six road games. Fade them here in this spot. I'm with you, Jesse. I'll add that the fact that Arkansas has won two in a row against the spread after losing three in a row. It seems like, to your point, they bottomed out and they're ready to roll. And they're a much better team 
than what they've been uh, showing. And I completely agree with your bet on the Arkansas Razorbacks and just lay the wood. So now, Dr. Chuck, I'm going to impersonate him as best I can. And we have, um, the game is the Fort Richmond Spiders are traveling to the Fordham Rams in the Atlantic 10 Conference. Uh, this is a one of those conferences that every once in a while produces a tournament team that becomes the Cinderella. I don't think any of these teams will be that type of team, but we're at Rose Hill Gymnasium, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Fordham Rams, 9-6, nine 9-6 and six. Nine and six against the spread, 9-6 and six over under. That's consistent. Spiders are 10-7, and 7-10 seven, seven and 10 against the number, 9-8 and eight over under. And I do have some notes here I'm going to share with you that were provided by Dr. Chuck. So um, we have Richmond is off a huge home game with Davidson. Fordham at home, closer to even than plus eight. So what he's saying there is that he thinks this game is, the value is certainly on the Fordham Rams. And uh, the line at plus eight is, is a gift and that it should be closer to pick them. And as Chuck always says, keep in mind what Vegas is saying here. Would anyone have the stones to lay 14 on the Spiders if this were in Richmond? And can, yeah, I, I agree with that. I would, I would never lay double digits with that Spiders team or very few in the A-10. Uh, and to his point here, the three-point shooting does not seem to be Fordham's forte, uh, but it doesn't mean they can't get after uh, what does he say? It means they can't get after against the 300th ranked perimeter defense in the Spiders that's allowing 37% from beyond the arc. So bad perimeter defense by the Spiders sets up an opportunity for Fordham to shoot much better than their even average, and he likes the Fordham Rams plus the eight points. Let's move on to uh, Jesse's second pick here, teeing it up. Uh, we have another great matchup. This is the Wisconsin Badgers, who are 14-2 and two and second in the Big Ten Conference right now. The Northwestern Wildcats 9-6, and six, but 10th in the Big Ten. It's a crowded Big Ten Conference. And just so you all know, there's 14 teams in the Big Ten. But Big 14 wouldn't sound very good. Against the spread, the Wildcats are 6-8 and eight against the number, over under 7-7. Seven and seven. Wisconsin 11-5 and five against the spread. I think the market's still catching up on the over under of Wisconsin and their fast paced style of game 11 and 5 over under for this season and as a favorite they're 11 and 1 the total for this game is 139 and a half and I might clarify Wisconsin plays faster than what we expect them to play they're not one of the fastest type of teams in the in the nation but Northwestern despite looking like a weaker team comes in as a two and a half point home dog Take it away, Jesse, and tell us where the best bet is. Well, John, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said the market hasn't caught up with Wisconsin. Uh, and I've been taking advantage of that. I, I bet on the total in the last game for Wisconsin, which was a 78-68 win at Ohio State. Uh, the total was 138, and I had the over there. And, uh, you know, normally people think of Wisconsin as a team that trends under. But uh, this this ain't that team. This isn't your your father's version of the Wisconsin Badgers. Uh, they've got a 20 point 20 plus point score for the first time in 20 years. Uh, Johnny Davis is averaging almost 22 points a game. That's uh, way over what we we expect from previous leading scorers for this Wisconsin team. You look at guys like Frank Kaminsky, uh, Ethan Happ, uh, Dimitri Trice all averaging somewhere in the neighborhood of 15, 16 or less per game. Uh, the Badgers are averaging 79.6 points per game in their last five. Northwestern is allowing that very same number, 79.6 points per game in their last five. Wisconsin, normally you think of Wisconsin as a very strong defensive team, They've allowed 73.8 points per game in their last five games. And Northwestern, you might think they can't score, but they're averaging 75 points per game in their last five games. So it really looks like the books are sleeping here on this total, especially when you consider Wisconsin has gone over in six straight games. 
And I think this is something to keep an eye on moving forward. Well, that's a great point, Jesse. Six straight consecutive overs. We talk a lot about trends and having the uh, you know, the smarts and the data to support when that trend matures and when it's going to settle out for a while, much like a consolidation of a bullish stock on the uh, Financial Markets Exchange. Do you think the trend here uh, is going to continue to the over? The market hasn't caught up. And it also reminds me of a Manny's Pub show where on the NHL portion of it, it had to do with Seattle. And you had said probably 45 days ago, because they've played like 26 games. It's got to be at least that long ago you said fade Seattle. So uh, tell us more about that. Well, I mean, uh, I, I do remember that on your Irish pub show. I don't know the exact date, but it was uh, it was well over a month ago, that's for sure. And at that time, I had noticed that uh, the odds makers were not really uh, giving accurate odds on the Seattle Kraken games. And my, my theory as to why was because we saw the uh, previous expansion team, the Las Vegas Golden Knights, came into the league and they tore it up and they ended up going to the Stanley Cup Finals with a ragtag bunch of players that were leftovers from other teams. And I think the fans got their hopes up that this Seattle team could do something similar. And I said on, on that show, you know, that's not the norm for NHL. You, you have an expansion team, you really expect them to be the worst team in the league. Now, the worst team in the NHL, uh, for example, you, this is something that was much talked about recently, the Arizona Coyotes were a 6-1 to underdog in, in a recent game against Colorado. And the average line for the Kraken games, um, they're, I mean, I, I bet against them last night, it was a pick -em. And uh, very rarely are they over uh, a 2-1 to dog, and, and they probably should be, on average, a uh, 2-3-1 to three to one underdog, the way, the way they're playing, the, the, with the lineup they have. So anyways, uh, I, I believe since I said that, Seattle has lost 20 of their last 26 games. So if you were just blindly betting Seattle since I told you to fade them, you would have made a pretty penny. But I will also point out it gets better than that. In 2015, I was uh, rather notorious for my involvement in a very, very uh, incredible week, which was the Detroit Tigers went over the total in 18 straight games and I, of course I was on on that number every single time and when I was contacted by the media as to why I felt it was important to go over in the Tigers game every single time it was because the bookmakers didn't move the line it was eight and a half every game and my theory was until they bump it up to 10 I'm gonna keep on hitting it and uh, I would say the same thing with Wisconsin here if it's 138 I, I'd say look at hitting the over until they Till they move that to where it should be, which is above 140, probably about 142 would be the accurate total I would give for tonight's game. That's great stuff, Jesse, especially the last part there of where your mind might start going neutral on playing the over with, with, with Wisconsin. But I agree with you. I don't think the market is caught up, and I think the public is trying to fade that trend. And as long as that is in place, the over is Going to win more times with Wisconsin games than the under, for sure. Good stuff, Jesse. Now it's going to be my turn here. And we're looking in the ACC here with the Tar Heels. They're third in the ACC right now. And surprise, surprise, Miami Hurricanes. I would have never, never in a million, well, at least a couple years, let alone a million years, but a couple years, I would have never thought Miami was the type of team that could be sitting on top of the standings. Granted, we're early in the season, but we're, we're more than halfway through now. And it's conference play, and we'll just have to see if these guys can hold it together. Uh, Miami's 13-4, and 8-9 and nine against the number, which to me means the market has priced them right. It's just that they have won. Over under 11-6. and six. Home, they're 8-1. and one. Underdog, they're 4-2. and two. North Carolina, 12 and 4, 7 and 9 against the spread, 8 and 7 over under, 3 and 1 on the road, and 11 and 1 as a favorite. They come into this a road favorite of 2.5 points with a rather robust total of 154. So I think these two, guys, these two teams are the types that will get at each other on the offensive end. And uh, clearly, first team to 80, I think, is the, is the winner and the cover. And I think that's going to be North Carolina. 
I, I love what Miami's doing. The story there is really good with um, um, Coach, uh, what is his name? Uh, Coach uh, Larry Naga. Coach L. Coach L of Miami Hurricanes. Uh, you know, after he got slammed by Alabama in the Disney World Thanksgiving tournament, there was news and the expectation was that he was going to be in the unemployment line. And thanks to the patience, and that patience should be rewarded for the athletic director sticking by him because he had a group of players that were coming from all different schools in the, in the transfer uh, portal, and suddenly they started playing well right after that loss. And point guard Charlie Moore is a guy that is with Miami, but believe it or not, Jesse, he's on his fourth school. So that means he's, he's transferred every single year. And uh, he's leading the Canes right now in scoring, uh, the past three games especially, at 21 points per game. And another young man from uh, George Mason, Jordan Miller, is averaging 16 points per game in the last five. Cameron McGusky, 18 points per game. And Isaiah Wong round out the double-digit scores at 16. So this team has played so well that my models now are saying that this is a, a, a point where you're going up against the pedigree of the North Carolina Tar Heels. Tar Heels definitely would love to get this road win. It would look good on the resume. And I, I do think they're going to get it. I would, you know, two, at two and a half points, I, I like North Carolina here as a best bet. Uh, when you play on road teams in a game lined within the threes, that means either a three point favorite or a three point underdog. That is coming off a blowout win of 20 points or more, which North Carolina did over a conference rival. And a game involving two solid teams with win percentages at 60% and higher. It's gone 164 and 90 over the last 25 seasons. That translates to 60% winners. I'm sorry, 62% winners. And it is 4-1 and one this year when just playing that simple parameter. So uh, I like the Tar, Heel, Tar Heels in this matchup. And I believe that's going to do it for our show, Jesse. We had a, a great show here, 17 minutes, five picks. We got Dr. Chuck's pick in on Fordham plus the eight. And uh, maybe a sprinkle in the money line, I'll, I'll suggest on that one. I always like those six to eight point dogs. So again, remind yourself to get over to Sports Memo right now. Then you don't have to remind yourself. And get our five-hour uh, trio of best bets. They're premium bets. And instead of paying $2 for each one of us, you get to get all three for five. And that's less than the cost of an IPA. So I think that's a tremendous value, especially when I'm giving out my first 5% game of the month type of play. It's, it's going to be a good night in uh, my opinion. So Jesse, thanks as always for your time. Your, your insights are, are just incredible. And uh, the, that whole thing about the over-unders with the Seattle is remarkably good. I was very impressed. So uh, for the Tuesday edition here, have yourself a great night in the betting markets and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell. It helps us keep this show going and growing as fast as it is. And until we see you again tomorrow for another edition of the Daily Dime Betting Show, always remember, bet with your head, not over it, and may all the wins be yours. <laughs>